Yeah, God is our healer, and he's moving, and he's doing such good stuff. Yay, thanks, Lord. Have fun in the back, our teens. Let's just bless our teens, yeah. We're so excited over you. We love you guys so much. Yeah, have fun. Yeah. Well, we're going to continue. We're going over um, what God has given us as a corporate body, as a church, um, as our vision and, um, and our purpose, really, um, as a body. But one of the things that God was talking about um, to me today, I just was spending time and listening to his heart. And the reason I put these two up is um, I really felt like the Lord was saying that he's redeeming time. And this has been something that he has been talking to me about for months now. Um, and I just really feel like sometimes we think um, maybe it's a, a feel-good word. Maybe God is just, you know, he's saying, oh, I'm redeeming time. But, it, but it's a, a real word from the Lord to individuals here, maybe watching online, us as a corporate body. He is redeeming time. Those things that we thought were lost, those things we thought we missed, the things that we thought were dead or forgotten. God is saying, no, actually, I'm reviving all of those things. I'm redeeming those things that you thought you missed. You, there was an opportunity there, and you didn't take it for whatever reason. God says, I'm actually redeeming that. I'm bringing it back around, and you get to step in this time. Those things that you think, I wish I would have done this, or I wish I hadn't done that. All of those things, God is saying, I'm actually redeeming them. Now is the time to allow me to redeem those. And that was one of the things he was talking about, too, is it's not a working it up. It's not striving for it. It's simply saying, yes, Lord, I am so connected with you. That's what we've been talking about is, God, what are you saying? What are you doing right in this moment that as I come to that new opening, I can just step through? I'm not constantly searching for the opening. Opening. I just have such an alignment with God and what he's saying and what he's doing that as he opens that, as he shows the redemptive place, I just simply step into it. So, yeah, Lord, we say yes to that in Jesus' name. Thanks, Jesus. We receive it. We receive it for all of us, God. We receive it for the people watching online. We receive it as a corporate body. Thanks, Jesus. Yeah. Just a reminder, again, I always start with this because we want to go back to what is our vision? What is our purpose for even going over this prophetic word? Our kingdom call that God has called his whole kingdom to is restoring the brokenhearted, setting people free. That's a kingdom call call. Then in Proverbs 25, 2, it says, God conceals the revelation of his word in the hiding place of his glory, but the honor of kings is revealed by how thoroughly they search out the deeper meaning of all God says. That's what we're doing. We're taking the word that God has given us, and we're saying, we're actually going to go after this. What does it look like? We're going to dig in. We're going to look at it thoroughly and ask the Lord, what are you saying today to me in this word? What are you saying about the future, but what are you saying right now? And I was talking with someone um, earlier today, and they were saying that they just feel like God has been speaking different things to them, but they don't know yet what all that means. And this is a beautiful um, scripture to hold on to. God conceals it in his glory, in the hiding place of his glory. And it's actually our honor to go in there and search with him for what he's saying. So thanks, Lord. All right, I'm going to call up um, Marcus and Teresa. We're going to go over um, the next section of this word. And I just, even as they're coming, I just want to encourage us. Um, be listening every time, and you can even go back and wa re-watch these on YouTube and ask the Lord, what are you saying for me right now? What are you saying for our corporate body right now? Um, is it something that you want to heal up in me? Because this first part is all about our identity. You were called out from among them. God, what are you saying to me in that? You will receive a new name. God, what is my new name? We talked about our corporate new name, but each one of us has a new name. God, you said that I was called ugly. I thought that's who I was, but you've actually called me your adornment. What does that mean for me right now? You were fear, but I have called you unstoppable courage. Yeah, ask the Lord, where, God, do you want to give me more courage than I have even right now, God? You were bitter, but I have called you irresistible kindness. You were tired, and I have called you mighty conqueror. You were abandoned, and I have called you my treasure, for I have pursued you. Go in there and really start searching that out between you and the Lord. Tonight, we're going to go to the next part of the word. It says, the song you won't relent. Sing the chorus as if God is asking us to be the fire inside of him the flame upon his heart. And this comes from Song of Solomon 8, verses 5 through 7. So it says, you're, 
Oh, sorry, that's the next part of the word. So let's just go over that and then we'll talk about it. It says, who is this sweeping in from the desert, leaning on her lover? Whoa, that's us. Thanks, Lord. Place me like a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm, for love is as strong as death. It's jealousy as enduring as the grave. Love flashes like fire, the brightest kind of flame. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can rivers drown it. If a man tried to buy love with all his wealth, his offer would be utterly scorned. So we're going to talk about that tonight. So what do you guys hear in that, both individually and corporately, for us? Just in that, and then we'll go from there. So um, the first thing that is actually extremely amazing is how God, this, if you read this um, Song of Solomon, if you read the lyrics of the song that are actually in Song of Solomon, they are actually the words spoken by the king. Because Song of Solomon is a Shulamite, Shunamite? Shulamite woman, and um, this king, this wealthy king who is pursuing her. And so he's actually the one who speaks that word of come be a fire inside of me, come be a flame upon my heart. And so when God says that to us, like we're used to th saying, God, come set fire in my heart, come all consuming fire, consume me, like you come and be fire in my heart and set me a flame, a blaze, and all this kind of stuff. We're like, God, come help my heart. But he's actually saying, you are fire inside my heart. And I just think that is so amazing. That's actually just astounding that we are that glorious and loved by God that he, we set his heart on fire. And he's so in love with us that we set his heart on fire. And he loves that we take, um, when we realize that and really realize that, it kind of like really changes everything. Because <laughs> it's not always God, just come help me be on fire for you. But God is actually so on fire in love with us individually and as his bride church as a whole church as his bride yeah, yeah go ahead yeah I, I think the the process is uh, you won't relent is that god first of all never gives up yeah. and i think bill johnson said this uh, uh, about that if there's nothing else to be burning then i will jump on the altar to burn yeah. and i think the process is is to uh, to live a life um with a complete yes all the time towards whatever God wants. That means even if that means I'm going to, uh, the Bible talks about living as a living sacrifice. And um, I think that's the part is that are we, are we willing to burn on the altar of God, on his heart? Are we willing to burn? Are we going to be willing to be that incense? And, um, and that, I think when we reach that level, it's because there's nothing more that we're on earth holding on to, but we're completely and totally engulfed in the heavenly presence. And I think that's what God literally is, is, is asking. I think it's interesting when you look, at, um, uh, you look at Israel, how they went into the promised land. They were supposed to do whatever they can to eradicate the people that are in there. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to be relentless. Yeah. And God wants the same relentless of us, that he is relentlessly pursuing us. Just like we're supposed to pursue him, he's relentlessly pursuing us. And I think uh, just to, uh, so I think that's a, on a personal level because he has personal and, and, and corporately. I think the personal is, is that we as a church personally have to understand that God is, our relationship, our influence is going to be so much uh, looked upon of how we're living our life. But then corporately together as we live that life, that's going to be the thing is that what we have as, as a mandate from God is to restore the broken heart and set the captives free. That's how we're going to be influencers in our city. So what are we, you know, are we, are we pursuing without relenting? Are we pursuing the city? Are we pursuing our nation? Are we pursuing really outside with such an intensity, with a fire in our eyes? You know, I think that's what we're, we are called to do. And there's an intensity in it. There's no, not a passivity. There's not a, well, how about today? There is an intentionality in that. And I think that's what God is calling us corporately. As we in, uh, personally uh, pursue him, we have also that on the other side as a side effect. I can't help but think how God has been so relentless with us as a church. Because um, I know there's others of you that have been here longer than me. But it's been really amazing to see how God's, like, 
through years of not having a pastor, through um, years of just kind of feeling like, okay, this is my church, but what really is the call? Like, what's really happening? Um, twice looking for when we didn't have a pastor and really spending a lot of energy looking for a pastor. It's really amazing to see how God brought us all the way full circle to this time where he's really building us as an army and he's really uniting us and our vision is so clear and straight in front of us and we're actually like walking forward and doing it. We're actually going into the borough. We're actually praying over people. Janine just talked about how she prayed over somebody at the grocery store tonight. So it's like we're actually doing it. And um, he didn't relent over us. Like he didn't stop what he wanted to have happen here in South Jersey through this church, through this house. He didn't quit. He didn't change his mind. He didn't change his plan. He didn't in any way like... let up on anything he was like this house this church i have created for something powerful and it's going to happen and it's really quite amazing to look back and be like wow he really did not relent for us as a house Yeah, um, you mentioned a few things that we're right now going after relentlessly, and one of those is we're taking Jesus, the love of Jesus, into every sphere of influence. We're going into the borough. We are relentlessly going after our city, the prayer walk on 2nd and 4th Saturday. People are going every single day time. We have a group that's doing that. The healing room. All of these things that we're going after. Living art. Taking that into everywhere we go. Put one in your purse or put a couple in your car. We're relentlessly going after. God, what have you called us to do? That's what we want to go after just as he is relentless with us. Yeah. Yeah, and I think when you read in, uh, the first uh, uh, sentence in, in Song of Solomon, who's uh, sweeping in from the desert leaning on her lover? And I think yeah. the important part is that uh, who's coming in and, and the word sweeping doesn't mean that you're nonchalant you're actually coming yeah. streaming in you're not you, you're purposely coming yeah. but you're still leaning and i think the part of the the process is that we're never independent of god mm-hmm. and it should always be noticed of each and every one of us that we have a, have a heavy lean on on the lord yeah. it's not an independent they see but it's a heavy lean on god that everybody would know that when they see us it's not they're just us but it's like there's a heavy leaning on the Lord when you're walking, when you're, when you're running, when you're sweeping in. And I feel like that's what we're supposed to be known by. And I feel like God is really doing that in us. And sometimes the hardest part is the toughest times is that when you lean the most. You know, when you're in pain, that's when you need a crutch. But God is not a crutch. But God is just letting you know, by the way, I just want to hold your hand. I, I want to walk with you. Just don't walk ahead of me. <laughs> I'm just walking with you. Actually, God has prepared the works for us to do, which actually means that he has done the steps already. Yeah. We just have to walk in them. Yeah. And I find that when we're looking at this, the picture that I get is we're heavily leaning on the father, like a kid that constantly just leans on his dad, and he, the dad's just walking proudly, walking steadily, walking in, in, in sync with what your purpose is. Yeah. And that's what God has called us to do. And it's interesting, I was reading this um, passage today in the Passion Translation, and it was saying how that word seal, a seal over your heart, like a seal on your arm, that word can be translated as a prison cell, but in a positive sense. Like, did you ever feel so in love with somebody that you just wanted to be, like, locked in a prison cell with them and nobody else could get to them and nobody else would talk to them or steal them or like you're just like me and them (laughs) that's what that like means like just us and God locked so intensely in love I mean I don't know about you guys but when I read the song of Solomon it's like I'm really not in love with God enough like I really need to be more in love with him because the way the verbiage how they talk how that um, book describes the love between Jesus and his bride it's so like intense passionate like it's like ah if you and if you keep reading for love is as strong as death i mean death is final yeah Uh, after death there's you're dead and basically you no longer have any eyes for anybody else but him Mm -hmm. 
and it says jealousy as enduring as the grave. I mean, that's like that is that word jealousy is not a bad jealousy. It's a good jealousy. It's like you are so passionate, you're so consumed with God that nothing else matters, and that it's a settled deal like death or like the grave. That's an amazing passion to have to have nothing else for God but that. And love flashes like the fire, the brightest kind of flame. And this, now the comparison goes, it is so hot that no water in the world can actually turn off that flame. Yeah. And, and I, when I read that, the fun part of that is that God says, I am enabling you to live like this. Mm-hmm. This is not just something that is to be read as poetry, but I'm literally telling you, I designed you to live like that. I designed you to live in such passion, in such a state of intimacy with me. I've designed you that you're able to do that. Mm -hmm. That's what I find is like, okay, so in 1978, God designed something like this for here to be a presence in South Jersey at this time, in this season. And God says, I am going to give everybody who wants to the ability to live in such an amazing way that anybody who is going to be just watching is going to see. There they come, the people who lean on him, yeah. who have such a, a love for him that nothing will take them away. They're martyrs for Christ. They're martyrs in their own right. Mm-hmm. And that they don't shun anything else but to do what the Father tells them to do. And that's so indicative of what Jesus did. And he does it in return for his bride. And it's so visible when you see people who are madly in love. It is so visible. They can't help but talk about the person. And, oh, and we did this. And, oh, and they're amazing. And have you met them? And have you heard them? And, oh, and if you could just meet them. And so that's a really beautiful, yeah, that will be who we, it is already who we are as we grow more and more in love with the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. Really good. Anything else there? I guess it just makes me think, like, really practically, how do we, how do we make sure we're cultivating that in our life? Like, it sounds so great. I know I've met people who are so incredibly in love with Jesus. They're, like, bouncing. They must be yellows, too. But they're just, like, <laughs> they're just, like, totally, it's captivating. And I'm, like, it's, like, this is really a huge key, obviously, for us, because it always talks about, in the Bible, coming back to our first love, our first love, our first love, and then little worries come in and creep in, and like, and then I have to sit down and say, okay, what am I worrying about, and I have to journal it, I have to write it down and do all this work to get my mind back and focus on my first love. It's like, man, nothing, nothing should take that first love place. Like, what else could, you know? It's interesting because um, for years uh, I wore this Fitbit, and um, when I t- spent my time with the Lord, it's interesting. I can actually trace it. It has a graph, and I trace it. My heartbeat goes down to about 48 to 46 beats per minute. Um, when I start spending time with the Lord, it goes between 50 and that. That's where it ranges. And all the time that I'm spending with the God, that's how low it stays. And there's part of that that... that uh, it's interesting that your body actually responds, your heart rate actually responds to the presence of God when you actually do that. And it's funny because I, I, I just for the fun of it, I just, I, I watch it because I'm thinking that's, that's my time when I'm really just in one-on-one with him. And, uh, and it's interesting that you actually can, you're, uh, when you are in love with God and you give yourself the time to be in communion with him, that's an amazing thing because you can actually send your body responds everything else responds and i think that's part of the process when you look at moses moses was a person that was 120 years old and it says when he died his eyes were not weak he was not weakened at all he was as strong as a young man at 120. yeah and i i i really feel that the more we spend time with God, there is something that in his presence, there is a rejuvenating. There's something there that we haven't yet tapped into, but we definitely are capable of doing that. And that's not a ooh, but it's just the reality of being in his presence. There's something about that. You know, there's, I mean, we have examples in scripture in that way. So I, I do believe, and I think that, um, our heart is not supposed to, it's not about, okay, I want to be eternally young. That's not the issue. But the issue for me is, 
how connected can I be with God that I can actually spend and, and have actually have him influence me in such a way, me receive so much of him in me that it changes everything of who I am, that it affects me physically, spiritually, emotionally, that people will notice here comes the person that leans on God. Yeah. Yes, and I know you've preached on this and we've talked about this before, but I think this is like such a great place to just say again, how, like, what does that look like? Like, what does it look like to spend time in the presence of God? Because I know I was saved for decades before I really understood how to bask and really commune in the presence of God. And I think, it's, you know, we make this so complicated. I just, uh, honestly, what I do, and just because we're talking about it, I just put worship music on, or sometimes I, God says, no, I don't want you, just, I just don't want you talking to me. I just want you praying. And I'll do either that or the other. But it's just, I set time aside. Yeah. That's all I do. I just set time aside, and my time is obviously much, very early. I start usually about something between three and four in the morning. That's when I have my time. And I just lay there. And I'm just there with him, and I'm, I'm, I'm just doing that. And the, the fun part of that is I give God, I, I pray specifically, say, God, now it's your time. You speak to me. You just, and you know what? It may be like Jacob who lays on the stone and says, surely the Lord has been here. And, uh, you know, you just know. But there's going to be a time when there's visitations coming. There's yeah. times I've had dreams. I've had where God speak, and sometimes it's just a peaceful time. But I know that the time, it's the, your consistency is when you gain favor with God. When you make time, when you fight for this time, when you say, this is my time, God, with you. Then God goes, okay. You, it's not that you're proving it through works, but it's just that because it's so important to you, he goes, okay. Yeah. Right? So it's not, I, I think we go, okay, I'm going to do this too. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> you know, do, what, uh, do it because you have a passion for it. Mm -hmm. Because that's what God rewards. God doesn't reward the performance. Mm -hmm. He rewards the passion in his heart. And if that's what you do, you go, I want to do this. Yeah. This is my choice. That's what he rewards. Mm -hmm. So. Um, one of the things just for me personally that um, probably it was in October, I think I just started feeling this rumbling of I want to I, I know that I'm a worshiper and I want to be able to worship in song. And so we have this little keyboard at home and I just started just had this really intense desire. Lord, I just want to learn just the chords so that I can sing my own song to you. Yes. Can I sing acapella? Absolutely. Can I sing with music on the Internet and wherever I am? Absolutely. But I just want to have something where it's just me and him. And I'm telling you, I will start, even I get choked up because I will just start playing just some chords. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, whoa, God is right here with me. And it's not that he's not always with me because he is. But there is something that shifts when it's like, whoa, Lord, we are in this moment so intensely together. And it's not like this beautiful, you know, all the instruments together, but it just is this sweetness between me and the Lord that has shifted. It's different now than it used to be. Yeah. And I think part of the process for us is not always expecting something, you know, polka dot a sky or anything yeah, else like this. Yes. I think we, we, we discount so many times just the sweet yes. voice of the Lord, the yes. still small voice. Yeah. We discount that, that like we're really not, you know, if God, if God doesn't talk to us audibly. Yeah. And I heard somebody once say, if God needs to talk to you audibly, then you're really off. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. if somebody, if your kid is playing in the middle of the street, you're going to yell at it, Tommy, get over here. Yeah. And we, also, we, we kind of put that as like, uh, you know, that's spiritual. God, I heard the audible voice mm -hmm. of God. Okay, and and <clears throat> I'm not trying to make it if you heard the audible voice of God that you're in sin. Uh, that's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But I am saying that God, he's so close to us, he doesn't have to scream. Yeah. He's equipped in such a way that he doesn't have to talk audibly. Yeah. We almost look at the audible thing as that's the real spiritual message. Go to God really loves you if you are mm -hmm. hearing it audible. Mm -hmm. I think that he has equipped it in such a way to hear him that yeah. if that happens, that's great. But if it doesn't, I'm just as w walking with God than anything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I find that, that we have to really pay attention to the little things. We have to pay just to the little things that God is doing. We have to start paying attention to them because if we don't, we're going to miss. Yeah. We're going to miss. If we want to walk like Jesus did, uh, then we have to spend a lot of time with him in order for us to be accomplishing what he did. Mm -hmm. 
And if we don't do that one-on-one, -on -one, we're not going to do that. And again, the leaning is so important. Are we leaning on him as we're walking? Are we leaning? Or are we doing a lot of things in our own strength? Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, yeah I want to talk a little bit about corporate worship because we're sensing a little shift, and we've just started talking about that, the shift in worship as a corporate body. So maybe do you want to just start that, and then we'll discuss it a little bit? Um, yeah, we're just really sensing a shift that we're – going deeper with the Lord. So like there was um, previous years, the mindset was, and it's not an incorrect mindset by any means, but kind of like have a gather them up song, you know, bring them in, everybody, a beat song coming in, which is not wrong, but you kind of had to have this progression to get to the Holy of Holies and the more worshipful songs. But we're really in this season where God has his bride. We're living in the Holy of Holies. We're living in the presence. And so it's now this place where it's like we bring the throne room. We bring the throne room to our corporate times of worship. We're there already, and we can just do it together now. Um, so it doesn't mean we'll never have fast jubilant songs but there are going to be services now on Sunday mornings sometimes where it's just going to be the presence is there whoosh you know like come we brought it we're here we're on fire like we've been talking about and we are just like our hearts are just fully engaged and we don't have to be prepped primed and prepared <laughs> to do it we're just ready to just look be right in his face yeah, I think part of the process is we used to come to church to worship, and um, we come tired, we come exhausted, we come, and then we hope that some songs will emotionally pick us up, and eventually we'll start singing, and then, you know, okay, that, that was good. We get a good feeling. Um, and I feel like, you know, in times, God is maturing us as a body, as a bride. Uh, he has been maturing us, and I feel like the, the time is coming where God is res putting responsibility in us, come with your worship. You know, come with your worship ready. In other words, come with your heart. So when you're 10, 15, 20, 30, 1,000 people, they all come with their worship. It's like everybody comes with a coal, yeah. and it's already burning. Yeah. And the way we look at that is that if everybody comes with a coal and it's off, boy, the team really has to be performing up here. <laughs> and, and, and maybe a spark will fly here, and then suddenly like, okay, well, they got it. And then, you know. Hopefully, you know, it gets hot enough for everybody to go, okay, we kind of go there. Imagine if everybody doesn't need any warm-up. Mm -hmm. yeah. If everybody comes wo woken up and we're like, I'm bringing my worship God. I'm good, corporately coming together with a ton of people, and we're going to come. I'm going to come in. I'm, gonna, I, I'm, I'm so ready to just give you worship. I'm so ready just to bow. I'm so ready just to give you praise. I'm so ready to be thankful. Corporately, we are so ready. Imagine... If a body comes with that preparation here, how the Spirit of God, because our words travel, puts angels in motion. Yeah. Our words put demons to flight. Mm -hmm. If you come prepared with words of anointing, words of declaration, words of God, heaven to earth, bringing that here, everything that the enemy wants to disrupt here is going to be, he's going to be running. Yeah. And there is an openness and there's a fire going in the spiritual sense. If we actually get to that point in our life where we grasp that, and that's what God is after. He's saying, listen, I want, you're bringing worship. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not the worship team is bringing worship. Right. You are in, in divinity bringing this worship here because you are declaring, you're giving thanks. It's no longer about what are the people thinking. I'm mm -hmm. coming prepared to give glory to God for what he has done. Yeah. I'm coming to testify yeah about the goodness of God. Yeah. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm singing. That's why I'm corporately raising my heart through my mouth, and I'm raising yeah, my... Yeah. Through, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. That's what God is bringing into the season. Yeah. He's bringing us to the next level and said, I want you now to come prepared. Mm -hmm. And I find that that's the fun part. We are gradu we're maturing. The yes. church is maturing yeah. to be... And so when you're coming in, it can be that... We're smacked down already by the time you have so many people all with the hearts ready. You're going to feel the presence of God because God says, I inhabit the praises of my mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. So it's already there. Yeah. 
So you already sense the presence of God. You already sense what he's doing. You already sense his arms around. You already sense him living and cohabitating. And that's what we're, that's what God is doing. So, and that's going to be, that we're going to do just simple stuff. And sometimes really rambunctious stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be different. But I find that it's going to be so much more intimate and so much more powerful because God he doesn't have to warm us up. Yeah. We're already there. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And it's a beautiful thing when we are able to verbalize that. That's one of the things that we've been doing um, at growth groups is just really getting vocabulary for that and realizing, oh, this is what I'm sensing. This is what's going on in the room. Because when we all come together and we bring that, oh, wow, this is what I hear the Lord saying, and this is what I'm feeling. And, oh, my goodness, wow, the joy of the Lord is in this place. Or, whoa the weighty presence of God is here right now. Wow, it just adds so much more fuel to that. Yeah, Yeah, and part of the process is too is that we have words on the screen. So sometimes we don't have words on the screen and we're just Mm -hmm. singing anyway. Or you can have words on the screen, you can still sing your own song. Mm -hmm. You can just, you don't have to start singing what they're singing. You just sing what is on your heart. It's totally okay. And you can sing in tongues. And it's not like weird. It's not like a frowned upon. You can... The thing is, is we have to give ourselves permission to God is doing a new thing. Yeah. He's doing a more intimate thing. He's yeah. doing a real thing. Mm-hmm. And it's not weird. Yeah. If we want to stay in the old, the old only gives us so far. It's mm-hmm. a new thing. And the thing is, God is always calling us closer to him, not further away, closer. Yeah. And some of us are crawling onto the altar and burning. Yeah. Some of us are just getting closer, depending on where you are. Yeah. But this is what God is saying. And I think like... We get so stuck on, okay, are the words there? Are, uh, am I doing this? If you don't catch the words, just, just shout to him. Just do something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If, if, if the song is too yeah. complicated for you, just go, ah, oh, Jesus. You know, it doesn't matter because you're just worshiping him. Yeah. We have to get away from this. And, and, and sometimes we'll encourage you corporately to do something. Yeah. It's not because, well, follow me. It's like, no, because we're sometimes sensing something. Mm-hmm. Okay, just like okay, let's do that. And if you're not a part of that right now because you're totally having your own time with God, that's totally great. Just do your own thing. Right? So So these are the things that are so fun that God is creating this difference in each and every person, this individualistic worship, but he's somehow bringing it corporately. And that's where the tension arises. And we kind of go, I don't know what that's going to look like. Well, I don't know either, but I get into you, God's chaos is always awesome. Yeah, amen. God's, what we look at chaos is always awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Because we come away with an experience. We come away with an encounter. We come away with seeing him. Yeah. I just feel like the Holy Spirit's releasing in the room, like that true um, value over you that you're not, when you come to church, you're not just here filling a seat, yeah. that you're actually bringing such an important um, part of the presence you're bringing the presence when you come on sunday morning and it's filling the room when you enter the room something this presence enters the room and the way it can only enter when it enters through you because his glory is on you in a way is not on anybody else and the way you carry the glory is so important and needed for what god wants to do here And, and i and i really sense that too is that god needs you to hear what he's saying he needs you to understand that you are so important that you carry his presence and that when you are not here and i mean that when you're not here there's some note that is missing there's some fire that is missing and there's some authority that is missing because you carry that and when you are here, and maybe you don't feel like you're awake enough, maybe you don't feel like you're all healthy enough, maybe you don't feel like all whatever, but because you made it, because you are here, there's something in the spiritual realm that is shifting because your anointing, your um, influence, your favor is here. And people who are here are going to benefit because you're here. And when we understand that that's what corporate means, that I am valuable, that I'm needed to impact the kingdom, everything shifts in the body because that's what's called unity. We're totally different, but we all united because we show up. 
And that's how the army of God is built. And the beauty, one of the beauties, too, is what we all carry looks a little bit different. Um, the, um, the picture of Jesus in you looks a little bit different than the next person. So one of the things we've been going after, too, even on Monday, is when we come into worship, you may stand up, you may kneel down, you may lay on the floor, you may write in your journal, you may sketch a picture. It is not always this I have to sing a song, and then he raised my hands, and that it's, what are you worshiping the Lord with today? Sometimes it's with your words. Sometimes it's in your thoughts. Sometimes it's with yeah. tears. Sometimes it's with dancing or flagging. What is God doing in you? And then you're actually releasing that. Even if you're writing a word in your journal and maybe aren't speaking it out, that is still in your worship is being released in the room. Yeah. yeah. Do we want to stay here? I don't, I'm not sure that we want to go on to the next piece because we only have about five minutes. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a good place to, be, yeah. to ponder because yeah. I really think that that's something that God has been yes. saying for a while. And I think it's obviously present tonight. Yeah. And I don't really want to uh, disturb that. Yeah. And I think that's, uh, that's something that is um, very present. And I think it's important to just um, um, really take that in. And, and yeah. uh, maybe you want to spend some time in the next couple of minutes, just saying, God, yeah. uh, show me how valuable I am. Yeah. Uh, because if we don't believe that we're that valuable, we're not going to buy what we're just talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to want to consciously say, God, yes, I see that I'm this valuable. I see that I carry your presence. I see that you said that your Holy Spirit lives in me. I see that, and I know that me corporately. I'm valuable here because in the spiritual, I'm just me showing up means I'm for you. And I put to flight at least 10,000 mm -hmm. demons. Why? Because I'm coming out of, out of my obedience to you, out of my choosing to believe that I'm valuable. I'm coming. Yeah. And that in itself, and because all of us, imagine if you have this view that every single person is here, is, all right, everybody put 10,000 demons to flight. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's an awesome place to be, yeah. that we're actually in a place where we're saying, yes, we are actually impacting in the spiritual sense, Stratford, New Jersey. We're actually impacting this uh, neighborhood. We're after, actually, when we are, serving, when we are uh, worshiping, we're here. Guess yeah. what's happening? We're actually going outside this realm. Yeah. These people, all these neighbors, everybody else is going to be having, uh, s they're, they're going to be thinking more clear. They're going to feel different. Why? Because God does these things. When his presence is there, he blows away that darkness. And I feel we're in this time. We're really in the season. And um, that God is doing amazing things. And I have a lot more to say, but I can't because I'm not, it's not Sunday. So. <laughs> One other thing when Sandy was talking about how, like, um, what I like to call, like, the living room worship time, when we're just being together with the Lord, like, like he's our dad in the living room. But I just feel like there's... It's even a time to be just aware of what things have been on your heart to do during worship that you felt like, I don't want to do. And I'm not saying today I'm here to push you to do it, but I just said, I just want you at least tonight to know that desire I had to sit down and draw a picture. I thought maybe everybody think I'm being disrespectful. That thought I had to go over and grab a flag. I was just really scared to be stand out in the room. Like, I at least be aware that that's the Holy Spirit, yeah. that he's nudging you towards some expression of worship yeah. that would feel out of the box or out of your comfort zone, but just be, start being aware of it, yeah. at least knowing that's the Lord, that's the Holy Spirit. Put that in me. That's an expression of worship. That's a power, a superpower that God put in me. Let's just take a moment. We're just going to take maybe two moments, um, two minutes. We're just going to listen to the Lord. You can ask him, Lord, show me, show me, wow, one thing you love about me, or wow, show me how valuable I am. Yeah, let's just take, we're going to take two minutes and just listen to the Lord, and then we'll close. Thanks, Jesus.
I just want to encourage you to, as whatever you've been hearing, write it down. Holy Spirit, we honor your presence here. <laughs> we thank you that you have called us, that you have called us your bride. We thank you, Lord, that you are pursuing us. We thank you that you are with us every moment of every day. We are so valuable to you, and you are so valuable to us. We love you. We honor you. We bless you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for who we are in you and who you are in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Lord. Thanks, Lord.